Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Ninja Knight. Make sure you like the video, make sure you share the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you. So after what seems to be an absolute eternity waiting for this guy and having seen multiple versions of the clone troopers be released before this guy, finally we have Hot Toys Django Fett. This is a character that I was struck by when watching Attack of the Clones when I was growing up. I was a massive fan of Django Fett and the portrayal of the character that Tamara Morrison gave. Eventually that character would become the template for the clone troopers that were to serve for the army in the Grand Republic. And I have to say, finally being able to pre-order this guy has made me very happy. This is a character that I'm a big fan of. I love the way he looks. And this Hot Toys figure, you could actually be surprised that this is actually a figure rather than an actual human being with how good this looks in my opinion. So Hot Toys released some images and I'm going to go through them now. And what's interesting about this is the level of detail that they've showed with this figure and all of the accessories that's coming with this guy. I know an awful lot of people were a little bit put off by the, what seems to be a high price. But I think with all of the accessories you get with this guy, it's certainly pushing itself away from being a deluxe figure. Which I'm happy about. And giving more options for a standard release rather than releasing one item here. And then another version later on down the road that they could have potentially used. So I'm very happy with this to be to be fair now I have to say. What we have here is an image of Django Fett. And I think that this is beautiful looking here with the flamethrower effect that's being used. We've seen this similar type of effect being used with the Mandalorian from Hot Toys aka Din Djarin. And I think with this similar effect of a clear going into a blue and then into the flame. Looks absolutely tremendous in my opinion. We have some nice detailing here on the armor. Looks like it's pretty scuffed up. And I think that that looks really well. We have his holsters here. Now whether these are made with pleather or not. We'll wait and see. But with pleather sometimes it does start to disintegrate and fall off. I think potentially if it's in sunlight. Or if it's in a very warm room. So do keep that in mind when you're displaying this figure. That's why personally for me and my collection. I don't like having figures under lights or LEDs or anything like that. I try to give them as little light as possible to make sure that these figures will have a great longevity within them. I think that this looks absolutely phenomenal here. We can see here it has a dint in the helmet and we have the backpack that he did wear on Geonosis. So very excited to see this one. We're going to have a look at another picture now that accompanied this and it's the head sculpt for Tamara Morrison and I mean that is incredible stuff. That looks like Tamara Morrison bang on. Now we know that we've had problems in the past with likenesses seemingly changing before release. Particularly with the Ewan McGregor Obi-Wan Kenobi likeness. There was an absolutely brilliant prototype scope of that. And then eventually when the figure came out it lost some of that definition. Now sometimes what happens is an actor or their agency can object to certain things. It seems like they took a lot of the wrinkles out of the Ewan McGregor Obi-Wan sculpt. That could be personal vanity or something to do with the agency. But ultimately then it gives a, in my opinion, less authentic looking figure. I think with all the markings and the scar markings here, particularly on Tamara Morrison's face that was playing Django Fett, it certainly brings in another level of character. And I think that this head sculpt is probably one of the best the Hot Toys have ever done. It absolutely nails them. Now given the fact that they have done Captain Rex and they have done Commander Cody as well too, before they have done Django Fett, they have plenty of option here to use that. My own theory is we know that Tamara Morrison is going to be coming back in season two of The Mandalorian as Boba Fett and possibly Captain Rex. So I'm sure that they're gearing up this tooling of Tamara Morrison to have many different versions of him in the future. Here we have the rest of the bodysuit and like I said there is some lovely wear and tear throughout the suit here that's really really nicely done. This kind of grime and dirt I really like that. Now looking at this neck piece as well too, this is the way it did look in the movie and I think when the helmet is on, the neck piece here is exposed and I think an awful lot of people having looked in some of the forums aren't too happy with that. I think if you position the helmet just right, you won't see the neck but I do understand the gripe that some people have that the neck is exposed and they would have liked to see this maybe sitting a little bit higher or the neck a little bit lower. But I think that then that would affect articulation. So... I think there's ways and means around it. Again, the holsters look absolutely phenomenal with the 
blasters inside him, very reminiscent of an old school cowboy. Something that we really miss, I think, from George Lucas within the last couple of movies and certainly the TV series. But John Favreau seems to be bringing that kind of idea back. Looking here with what he comes with. So Django Fett is pretty geared up, and I have to say, I think ultimately worth the price in my opinion. So he comes with this helmet. Now you'll notice here, I've talked about this helmet here, and that there is no dent in this one. So there's no dent in this one. There's a dent in this one. What seems to be happening is the top part of this helmet is able to remove, and you're able to put each part on. Now, that was the CGI. Between the CGI and the actor, there was a change in the helmet, the way it looked. I think that they tried to change it after he bumped his head, particularly in the scene on Camino. And it, depending on if you're a sharp-eyed viewer, it either shows up or it doesn't. He also comes with the wire that he used to trap Obi-Wan Kenobi within that fight. He comes with the blades that were also used in that fight to stop him from falling off of the Kaminoan launch pad. As we can see here, there's more details showing this helmet. I think a lot of people probably would have overlooked that this little piece here is there. We have the headgear set that he used when him and Boba Fett were on Slave 1 and they were flying away from Obi-Wan Kenobi. As we can see here, the flamethrower effect is here. We have some nice poses with the pistols. Looks great. We have here a blast effect, which is basically a sort of grenade that we can see here. We have what seems to be the tracking device as well, too, that we have with this character. And here is probably a more obscure little thing that people probably would have even forgot about for this release, which is the canister with which he gives Zam Weasel with the two poisonous centipede-looking creatures within it. So that's a nice detail, I think. I don't think there's anything more that you would be giving this character personally. There's nothing in mind that you could have given this guy except maybe a miniature Boba Fett, perhaps as a deluxe. But I digress. I think that this is absolutely phenomenal. We also get his poncho here that he wore fighting Obi-Wan Kenobi and just as he was boarding and trying to load up Slave 1. We get a launch missile here and this flame effect I think is absolutely phenomenal. It gives a very dynamic look. We also have launch trusting sort of flame effects as well too that can be plugged in to the backpack and as you can see here he comes with the two separate backpacks so the backpack that he did wear on Coruscant and on Camino. he then later switches the backpack to this one which is on Geonosis so this is absolutely outstanding in my opinion look at the detail there look at the grime and the dirt that's on that there it really helps brings it to life i know the cgi model certainly was a lot cleaner from what i remember but then it did get into sort of video game looking territory this looks phenomenal it looks like tamara morrison has just stepped off screen and i'm very excited to see this now as i can say you can see sort of the neck here below the helmet but if you have a facing like this, this is very reminiscent to that poster when we seen it with the amount of clones that were behind them, if anybody remembers that one from some of the promotional material. And I think even this pose in itself looks absolutely phenomenal. I'm excited for this. I think you can understand from me that it's a certainly a boy, not a pass. And if you're a fan of Django Fett, and particularly the clones, I think that this would look phenomenal standing in the middle of a display with Boba Fett behind him. Or some of the clones which I've also pre-ordered. I've Cody and Rex pre-ordered. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. And I suppose a lot of people could have some interesting pictures being taken. With the various different Tamara Morrison head sculpts. And it looking like perhaps that he is training those guys in. As that's what Django Fett's primary function was on Camino. I'm excited by this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you going to be purchasing this or are you going to pass on this? Is there certain elements of this figure that worries you? I would certainly say that the headpiece here being removable, particularly on the dome, is a bit of a worrying thing for me in terms of longevity. And certainly I hope it's not loose or anything like that. I hope it fastens in nice and tight. Also as well too, I hope that the neck isn't too noticeable under the helmet. I do understand that there was more of a practical effect within the movie, but there are certain times when the, the neck piece isn't being able to be seen, but that is because I think most of the time that is a CGI render. What do you think of the accessories that come with this guy? I personally think they're loaded, and I think that's really great to see. Is there anything else you would have liked to see with this character, or is there a different version of this character that you would like to see? We've recently seen Hasbro do the Gamerverse version of Django Fett, 
which is really interesting and has a different color palette and i think it's something maybe that hot toys could look into down the road because they have released kenner inspired versions of boba fett recently are you going to be buying this guy or are you going to pass let me know in the comments make sure you like the video make sure you share the video make sure you subscribe to the channel and i've created a facebook group called ninja knight if you'd like to join me over there i post videos have chats with the fans i'm also on at the underscore ninja knight on twitter if you'd like to hit me up there gonna leave the video there good luck